Hi guys, today I'm sharing with you 28 Christmas tier tray decor DIYs and some of them might be a little bit out of whack with the ordering but uh, these are some of my favorites so I thought I'd share them with you. So let's get started. Then I had some of this canvas that I was actually going to use uh, for a DIY for fall and it got there's some uh, paint stains on it so I thought I'm going to reuse it in a different way for Christmas. So I ended up uh, uh, just doing um, taking the the canvas part off and I'm sure you've known this but th those canvases actually have really really nice frames and I gave this frame one coat of white acrylic paint and then last year I had picked up um, tons of these gift bags and I actually saved them for this year's crafts so I had found this um, Christmas, fresh Christmas tree farm uh, and I thought this image would look so good in a frame so I trimmed it to fit the frame just an FYI when you are trimming you want to leave yourself enough edge to go so you're able to actually glue the picture onto the uh, frame. I ended up having to cut more pieces and just glue them to the sides so that way they would fit because I cut it too close. Now I'm just measuring out. I will not be including the uh, tree farm words on the because they won't fit but that's okay. I like the, or farm fresh actually because I like everything else and I don't think I will be missing any of those letters. And I use a hot glue to uh, glue the frame to the picture or the picture to the frame. I think this is another very, very simple DIY and a great uh, picture or a sign to use in your Christmas decor for under $2 because really you can reuse the canvas and the bag still has the other side which has the exact same image on it so you can get um, two different types of DIYs from that one gift bag. I absolutely love this. You know how much I love the red trucks or the trucks and using them in the core and this is just right up my alley. For the next one I'm using these ceramic tiles. I've had these for such a long time. I think I picked them up for like 25 cents at Home Depot very long time ago and I finally put them to good use. Now there are tons of inspirations out there for the coasters so I just kind of took the inspiration but created my own design. Now the ceramic ones that I found were set of four for like $49 over on Wayfair and I thought that was just a little too pricey even if now this these tiles cost you a dollar which I don't think they're going to be much more than that you would be only spending about four dollars now just um, I am using these Dollar Tree stencils that I've been using quite a bit this year um, and I am loving them and just a black and white design because if you've been uh, watching my Christmas DIYs I have been kind of loving this black and white design for Christmas and I'm taking a small eye makeup brush a sponge brush just to clean up any mess that I might have made with sponging on and I'm using a sponge to sponge the acrylic paint on and another thing that I wanted to do but realized I didn't I, I couldn't find them I thought I had them but I could not find them are the little felt circles that you put underneath the chairs at the leg of the chair so they don't make noise when they're scrubbing around the floor moving around on the floor I wanted to add those to the back of the uh, tiles so that way they have a soft they don't scratch your furniture to finish this design, I sprayed this clear gloss finish from Rust-Oleum and this will make them last longer and protect them from any water damage. Cardboard that I had on hand and then you will need something uh, to trace uh, a circle. So I'm using a lid from a candle holder uh, from a candle like Bath and Body Works candle. I don't think this one is Bath and Body Works but 
hopefully you get the idea. And I trace it out. I will be making two of them, so I need four circles. And once I have them traced out, I will cut them all out. This is a very simple DIY, however, there are several st steps to it, so it does take a little longer to make. So I'm using also these dowels or sticks. You could use popsicle sticks as well if you, that's what you want. And I'm hot gluing them to the one side, and then I'm going to hot glue the other circle on top. So I'm wedging the stick in the middle. And I repeat the same thing for the other one. And then once that is done, you can use tissue paper. If you have tissue paper, you can use uh, printer paper if you want. I am going to use some coffee filters because I have lots of these on hand. I'm also going to use Mod Podge. So I'm going to apply Mod Podge on top on the sides and then a little bit on the other side because I'm going to be applying some more as I go. And then I'm going to add my uh, coffee filter on top and smooth it out and then once it's smoothed out on the one side I'm going to make little slits. This will be just make it easier to fold around without wrinkling too much and I also make a little bit of a bigger slit on the bottom of it so I can fold it easier right around the stick there. So and then as I fold I will be adding a bit more Mod Podge just so they can sit on top where they overlap nicely. Making our Christmas memories I've been working so much lately I can barely find the time to sleep Yeah, I spend my time running around Keeping people pleased now to finish it off, yeah, I'm just going to brush a little light layer of Mod Podge on top. You want this to dry completely and then repeat the same process again with another one. I did not bother showing you that because it was the same thing over again. So you want two layers of the coffee filter or the tissue paper or whatever you're using. And then once it's fully dried, I gave it two coats of white paint waiting fully to dry in between the coats. Then when it, that was fully dried, I took a pencil and just uh, drew on some swirls uh, where I want them to kind of go and which ones I want to paint red, which ones I want to paint white. I think the diagram that I drew was I was the only person that knew what was going on because I was going going you want them all to be curved one way whereas I kind of went half one way half the other way so then I had to fix it and then I pretty much you paint every other one with red paint and then you also will add a red paint just a thin line of red paint in the middle that's at least that is what I did and then you want this paint to completely dry so once they were both dry you can see one looks a little bit better than the other but don't worry because you're going to be applying tons of glitter which will make things look so much better I am going to first apply a layer of Mod Podge over the red uh, using a wider brush and then a thinner brush for the thinner lines and then I'm going to sprinkle the mod, uh, the mod Podge, the glitter. I am using the Recollections glitter from Michaels. And here I am just doing the thinner lines now and I will repeat the same thing for the other one. Now you could also, so don't forget to do the sides as well, and you could also do uh, white glitter in once this dries completely in between. I just left mine with the, with the, just the white paint because I like the way it looked. It's a chance to start over new Cause I missed you so I'm letting go of everything but you 
these are the good times with you Baby, this year is just gonna be you and To brush off any glitter that maybe uh, is stubborn and doesn't want to fall off, I am just using a clean brush. And here they are. I think they turned out really cute. My next DIY, I cut up these three little houses. <laughs> I'm going to call them houses. And I'm going to uh, use this apple barrel and folk art um, acrylic paint. The green one is the folk art and it's bright green. The red one is flag red. And then the white one, white one I think it's just called bright white. And I'm going to paint each one of these with the each color and I'm just going to paint the I'm gonna call it the front the sides and the top I'm not painting the back making our Christmas memories oh and I've been long to hold you close forget about everyone else isn't this how it's supposed to be making our Christmas memories once they were painted and dried, I gave them some thinning and I really liked how distressed this made it look. And even the white one, I uh, sanded down a little bit. The white one obviously didn't show as good as the other ones, but you could still see it a little bit. I picked up this uh, fur uh, ribbon from Dollarama and I'm going to be using it as well as some of these um, beads. They all came from Dollarama and I just picked out three of them and I'm also going to cut up this burlap ribbon. I just wanted it to be a little bit thinner. And so I'm cutting them in half. Oh, oh, oh. Da, 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 da. So I'm going to glue this uh, ribbon onto each of the little bodies or the little houses, kind of in a half midpoint. I've been hanging marbles in the tree and I lit my house with Christmas lights so you should come back home to me. And when we wake up in the morning, I'm gonna play those carols. So now to add the fur, I think you're getting... Um, figuring out what I'm actually making here uh, so the fur I just gave it a little cut in the middle a lower because I want the bead to go in there and then I just fringed it a little bit um, got rid of any loose fur that was a really big job getting rid of all that loose fur and then I'm going to glue it on and then I'm gonna glue the a uh, little bead for the nose and then I'm also going to add some eyebrows but just by cutting little pieces of the fur ribbon and adding it on so they ended up looking like angry gnomes a little bit so I'm going to repeat this process for the rest of them if you're stopping by my channel for the very first time my name is Sonia and um, welcome I hope you like what you see and if you do I would love it if you consider subscribing and pressing that notification bell so you don't miss out any of my uploads and make sure you also check out the full playlist in case you've missed some of the videos that I've already posted on my Christmas DIY playlist. There's tons of uh, inspirations from hot cocoa stations to ornaments to signs so I'm sure you'll find something that you will enjoy and if you're returning thank you so much for your continuing support i just love the way these guys turned out and you can also add a little bit of a rope on the top to hang them as ornaments and the coloring will go perfect with the candy for this very first one, I am using this house sign that I picked up at Dollar Tree and I really liked the shape of it and the look of it, but wasn't crazy about the inside of it. There was a lot of glitter and stuff, so I removed the little 
um, wreath but you don't want to throw it out because I will be using it later on for something else so I just set it aside and then I took my little hand sander and sanded this completely down getting rid of all the glitter I really wanted to use this side otherwise I probably would have just painted the other side but I like the way the roof line was on here and I wanted to kind of have that raised roof line look for this sign so uh, this took um, about a minute or so just to give it a good sanding I use my sides too to sand because they're a little bit rougher than the the bottom I think I'm due for a new sanding block so once that was all sanded down and cleaned off I gave this a two solid coats of paint however I did find that even with two coats of the white paint it wasn't quite enough uh, to cover up all the bumps and raises that the letters were creating and some of that plaid was still showing. Probably should have painted it black first but I uh, uh, decided just to uh, tape a white piece of paper down to it. But uh, after, uh, before I was done doing that I just added some snow onto the roof line. And I just used some printer paper to replace it because, like I said, once I saw how, how the second coat was drying, it did not look really good and I needed to have a smooth uh, edge. I wasn't sure that the paper would work. I just, like I said, used printer paper, but it did work. Uh, now I'm going to use my Hippo uh, transfers and I just added them into the water hot water and I will link the video down below where I have the full tutorial on how to use the a hippo water slide paper and I also have a code that you can use down below this is definitely a great alternative if you do not have a Cricut machine all you need is a, a, a printer and it has to be the inkjet printer it cannot be the laser printer at least not for these slides but I just love the way this turned out I am definitely getting better at it um, I did struggle at the beginning when I was using them but I am definitely getting better at it at it so I've there is a process like I said I have a full tutorial on how to do this but you pretty much print your image off and I will link the free image in the description box but you link the you print the image onto your water slide, then you spray them with a uh, finish. I just use Rust-Oleum glossy finish, and I spray it three or four times. Uh, and you want to fully dry between the sprays, and then once it's you're done that process, you add the water slide into the hot water, and I waited for about a minute or so. Uh, you will kind of see how it is and when it's done and then you just slide it off onto your image and then just smooth it out I just used a rag and gently smoothed the bubbles out and I just love the way this turned out for my next project I'm using paint stir sticks that came from Dollarama I think um, in US you can buy them at Dollar Tree as well and then I'm using some Jenga blocks now these are actual Jenga blocks I picked them up at Value Village but you can definitely use the stacking blocks from the Dollar Tree or Dollarama and I am creating a frame with them and I'm going to I'm using eight of them and I'm going to use hot glue to assemble the frame
once the frame was ready and set, I add some stain to it using the same stain in the same way with a rag. I just love the way this stain looks and I think it's going to look great with this a picture that I'm trying to recreate. So once the stain, I applied the stain on all the inside, the sides, and then the outside edges as well, because if it's a frame, you're going to be able to see it. Now, the only downfall with these Jenga blocks is that those Jenga words show, but um, I still, you can't really see them unless you're kind of standing over top of the sign but it was what I had on hand. The benefit of using the ones from the dollar stores, they don't have that. So once the frame was stained, I end up cutting my uh, paint sticks, a stir stick. I'm kind of trying to create somewhat of a ship black background look. Uh, so I'm just going to measure up one uh, exactly where I want it to go. And then I'm going to use i stack them together and I'm going to use one of them just to uh, draw a straight line across where I want them to be cut. And I'm just using metal shears to, um, to cut this because I find that they work pretty good with cutting almost anything. I also want to mention that if you're stopping by my channel for the very first time, I would love it if you considered subscribing, pressing the notification bell so you don't miss out any of my future uploads. Over on this video, I do tons of DIYs from dollar store to trash to treasure to some furniture makeovers. So I would love to have you be part of my YouTube crafting community. And if you do decide to stay, please let me know down in the comments. I would love to know you a little bit better. Let me know where you're from and what you enjoyed in this video. So once these were all cut, I do sand, out, sand the edges a little bit and trim them some more just to smooth them out. You probably didn't have to do, go ahead through this process because the little uh, wood pieces are going to be on the back and nobody's gonna really see them. I did cut one extra one just um, to make sure that I had enough, but I did not end up needing it. Now it's ready and I'm going to paint them with that Christmas red paint uh, and I'm going to apply the paint with the paintbrush making sure I cover it all and then I'm going to wipe some of that paint off with a rag. I think this just gives it a rustic look. If you've been watching my DIYs lately, I do enjoy using this um, method. I just think um, it just it almost like deepens the the project or makes it look old and aged. I don't know if uh, you feel the same way, but that's how I feel that it makes it look. And then some of that wood grain, even though there isn't a lot on a paint stick, a stir stick, it does um, kind of show through as well, which I like. Oh, oh, da, 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 making our Christmas memories. Yeah, see, it's all the good times with you. Once they were all nice and painted, I assembled the frame by hot gluing them to the back of it. And not sure if your paint stir sticks have a ruler on one side. So if you're if they do, make sure you do the paint and all that stuff on the side that does not have the uh, ruler markings. And now I'm going to take I'm taking this uh, wooden snowflakes that I picked up at Dollar Tree, a package of them, and I'm going just painting both sides white. And the reason why I painted both sides white is because it was hard to get into the little crevices and uh, painting the other side helped with that. It's so good to see you again, to see you again, baby, this year is just gonna be you. So once everything was dry, I just hot glued the snowflake in the middle and I just think this is such an easy and cute DIY and I can't wait to use it in my bedroom. Now 
Now these um, two next two DIYs are very similar and I'm not going to go through the full process of assembling both of them. I'll just show you the finished pro uh, product because it's they're pretty similar and the steps are the same and I didn't want to bore you. But I went ahead and cut these into equal sizes, equal rectangles and I'm going to you work with a group of three. So the first three, I am painting one red, one green, and the other one red. But the one red, I'm painting the top and all uh, and the three sides. And then the green one, the next red one, I am just painting the front and the sides. And then the green one, I am just painting as well, front and the sides because I'm going to be creating book stacks and there is no need to be painting the other two on top. And then the, the other three, I'm painting them all red, same thing, one is fully painted on the four sides, and I'm not, I mean the three sides and the top, and then the other two are just the, the sides. So the first one, I'm going to glue them alternating, and then I'm use my Cricut machine to cut out some words uh, to add to to them. And the next one, I will uh, be writing it with my white chalk paint marker from Dollar Tree. I just wanted to give you an option of that you don't need to have a Cricut to do this. Uh, this part you can just carefully write out your words. I did struggle with my words a little bit because I as you know I mentioned before I do struggle with smaller items on the Cricut. I am getting better at it. I think I was better at it here except when I pulled it apart. Um, one of them flipped and glued back on and then I couldn't remove the letters so I had to do it pretty much manually using the little picking tool and my uh, tweezers that I have, which are all the tools from the Cricut. But I love the way both of them turned out. I did add some rope around the fully red ones, um, and I think they're going to be great on tear tray or just as a shelf filler. I also use my Cricut tool as well as my um, razor blade uh, and I cut this was an egg shape from Easter and I just cut, uh, went into Cricut Access and found a cutting board sized it up and cut it out it did take several cuts to go through in order to do that and then speaking of Cricut Access one of their featured images was this uh, fe reindeer feed, which I thought was so cute. So I, again, um, saved it and sized it up and to fit the cutting board. And I'm going to transfer it on. This is a dollar store, Dollar Tree red vinyl. And I do find that it's it works. It's just not as good as, uh, as the Cricut vinyl or the... One, the Oracle, is it Oracle vinyl that you can get at Michael's and at uh, on Amazon. But this is the only red I had, and I really wanted to add the red to this white cutting board. And I wasn't wrong with the way the whole project ended up looking. And again, this is one that you can use for your tear tray, or you can use it as an ornament. <music>
next project is a gnome makeover. I could not find any of those plain um, particle board um, gnomes that the dollar or wood gnomes that the dollar store dollar tree had that I saw people haul so I picked this guy up at Dollarama and I am just um, painting the red with my Christmas red because I did not like the color red that was on there you don't have to do that if you like the red color um, I just felt that it was almost more on the we're pulling on the orangish red rather than the actual Christmas red so I just added my Christmas red then I wanted to darken up the nose so I tried applying my stain onto that um, nose but it was very smooth so I pulled it off flipped it around and stained the other side and then just glued it back on and I think this looked much better and then for the glittery um, you could leave it as is now I think he did look pretty cute but I wanted to go one step further so I wanted to add a furry uh, beard so I'm using one of those dusting uh, pads car dusting pads from Dollar Tree as a his as as his uh, beard but I traced traced out the uh, uh, beard onto the just a printer paper just so I have a bit of a form uh, so I can uh, cut that somewhat to fit the to the top of the the beard this was a little bit of a messy project because those little um, things were everywhere from the dusting mitt and then once I had that cut out, I just um, put it on and tried to see where else I need to trim, uh, smooth out, kind of brush out the, the, is it a feathers or whatever it is, it's not feathers, but whatever that material is called. And then once I was satisfied with the look, I ended up gluing it on and I ended up trimming it some more just on the sides just to give it a bit of a more uh, of like definition rather than just a straight edge and I think this made him look so much more cute than what he already was and then I took some of those things that I cut off and had glued them to the top of his hat just to add a little bit extra stuff to him For the next project, this snowflake came from Dollar Tree. I picked it up last year. I am not sure whether they still have them this year, but um, I used them so many different ways last year. But this year, I wanted to stain it because I'm trying to create somewhat of a decor for uh, my uh, my master bedroom. I do apologize for a whining and crying dog. He uh, wants me to go out and take him for a walk but he just needs to be a little bit more patient. And uh, so once I stained the snowflake doing this exact same process as I did before with my rag and the dark walnut stain, I take that little wreath that I took off from my first project and I'm going to um, add it, but I wanted to embellish it a little bit. I was going to add uh, like another garland, um, berry garland to it, but I really wasn't working for me. So I ended up taking that berry garland off and taking the smallest berries and hot gluing them on to it. I think these berries definitely beefed up the wreath, but I still wasn't quite sure that it was where I wanted it to be once I I was done and uh, added it um, to the snowflakes. So then I decided that what I'm going to add to it are these pine cones, but they obviously were way too big. So I just trimmed off the tops and added those to the wreath and I think this ended up looking much better and to take it even a further step using the brush with the white paint on it without dipping it back in I just took that and brushed it on top of the pine cones and then I proceeded on brushing the whole um, snowflake with uh, that whatever was left over on that paintbrush and I think this made the snowflake look that much better <music> Thank you.
For this project, I'm using one of these um, artist panels that I picked. I think this one came from Dollarama. I'm not sure if I got it at Dollar Tree. I'm not sure if the Dollar Tree actually carries them. But I just stained, again, using the same stain. And you can use whatever stain or paint you wish. I'm just using this one because I love it. And I stained the out like the the front of it as well as the inside of it um, and then just a little bit on the edges as well and don't worry about uh, messing up the inside because I will be gluing on some wrapping paper I am going to be using the same wrapping paper that I used in my hot cocoa station if you had watched that video and I'm using tacky glue to add it on so I'm just measuring out where to cut it approximately because doing it this way I will be about half an inch on each side longer but then I just put it there and marked it off with a pen just did little dots to know where to cut it and once I cut it and fit it in I just glued it on now I did cut out a image on my Cricut machine and this is one of those um, images that is available on Cricut Access so I do not know what font it is. I did try to look it up because I had a question in one of my previous videos what font I used. So I went ahead and looked at it but it doesn't actually tell me what font it is because it's already pre-made project. You just uh, size it up to fit, fit your uh, whatever your project you're doing. You can move items around as well, but I didn't. I just left it as is. Now I did make a mistake of um, adding this way too soon because the tacky glue has not had a chance to dry. So when I went and tried to pull this off, it was ripping the um, paper off with it. So I proceeded on finishing this project just so I can show you and I did re redo the, the backing again by gluing on the wrapping paper and then waiting and cutting out another image. And the last project that I'm going to be sharing with you is very simple, no paint involved, you just need some glue. So I'm using this plaque that came from Dollar Tree as well as this little square garland and the Let It Snow came from your dollar store with more. And then I'm going to hot glue the cut the garland in half, well I sized it to fit here and then I just had glued it to the back and I wanted to leave some some um, give to it so it kind of droops down a little bit and then I used these little uh, uh, cut out pieces I think these came from Dollarama little snowmen I know you can pick up snowflakes at Dollar Tree I think uh, that would look great as well and then I just had glue them so they look like they're hanging off the garland and that's it So for this DIY, I had gotten this jar as last year actually during Christmas DIYs as well. And I'm going to give it two full coats of this Christmas red acrylic paint. Um, I really like how deep red uh, paint this is and it it is a true to me Christmas red. And then I took my chalkboard marker in white and just wrote Merry Christmas. I'm kind of duping a... Ray Dunn uh, canister that is out there. I just thought this would really look good on a tray with some flowers or on the back of a tear tray um, as a backdrop um, to that tear tray. So like I said, I love how this red turned out and I love how the white looks on the red. I thickened up the lines a little bit just so they are um, more solid. This is such a great uh, and easy DIY. Um, you practically don't need uh, many supplies. It costs about a dollar and it's a great addition to your Christmas decor.
For this DIY, I had left over some of these rounds that came from Dollar Tree. There's like a pack of 10 of them or something like that. So I'm using one and I just um, traced a circle from the back of the uh, paint container and I'm going to cut that out. And I think you are getting a pretty good idea as to what I'm making right now. So once that was cut, I just um, trimmed off any uh, loose pieces in the middle and then I also took a little sanding block and just sanded that down just so there's no uh, loose ends or that can give you splinters or anything like that. Then I took my uh, chalk spray paint and just gave it a coat of uh, spray paint. This was just faster than painting it. And once that's dry, I actually used a coffee filter, but you can use tissue paper, napkin, really anything. And I kind of created a paper mache almost on it just to give it some texture. Um, I use Mod Podge for this and I just um, put some Mod Podge on the bottom, scrunched it up on top of it, the coffee filter, and then I added some Mod Podge on top. And I love how this turned out. It really gave it a tons of texture. And while the Mod Podge was still wet on top, I had these micro bead sprinkles. Um, I had them on hand for a long time. I think they did come from Dollarama. And I used red and uh, green ones and just sprinkled it. Kind of using it as sprinkles for a donut. As you can see, that is what I'm making. So like I said, I use red and then green. And then I just finished it off with some of that Spectra glitter. I picked that up last year. I have a link in my Amazon store for it. It kind of looks like sugar. Um, and I think that's just perfect for to finish off this donut. I am loving these wood shapes that Dollar Tree is carrying this year. I did not see these last year. I had picked up several different ones. So for this one, um, it's a Christmas tree. I am using acrylic paint in Christmas green. Again, I love this green color. Uh, and I gave um, this wood piece two solid coats. And I did the sides, the top, I did not do the back. Once it was uh, painted, I let it fully dry before I moved on the next step. Now for the next step, I took some of my rope, just some of that jute rope, and added a little bit of hot glue at the back, uh, waited for the glue to uh, glue on the to dry with the rope on it, and then just randomly wrapped it around the tree. I think this just gave the tree a little bit more character and then I just finished it off with a little bit more hot glue at the back or over the the rope and just let that dry and simple easy but very cute DIY. <music> Now next one again, uh, same same idea, but I am going to use my um, oak, uh, dark oak stain. Uh, you can use paint as well. I just love this stain so much and I want to use it every single time I have a chance. And I use the rag just to spread it around, get into the little grooves. And then once this was uh, all done and fully dried, I took some hot glue and just um, traced out the edges, um, added a good um, thick layer of this hot glue and then I also added some in the middle just to add a little bit more design to it. And once this had the glue completely dried, I went in with white acrylic paint and I was trying to make it look like there 
was icing and this was a cookie and I think I did a pretty good job in replicating a cookie. I, th I just love using these on trays. Um, I, last year I used some in a cloche so it looked like there were actual cookies and um, I just think this is so cute and such an easy DIY that anybody can really do it. Well, I'm so glad that you are still here watching and if you're not subscribed, make sure you press the subscribe button and a notification bell so you don't miss out any of my future uploads. I appreciate every single one of you for stopping by and watching and don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you are enjoying this video. For this one, I'm using up some of these foam gingerbread men that I've had on hand, still left over from the daycare days. And um, you can buy these at Dollarama as a pack of, I think there's like 20 or something like that, quite a bit. And I'm doing the same idea. I'm tracing them out with some hot glue. Now, because this is craft foam, it will curl up a little bit, but that's okay. I think it just gives... Uh, this gingerbread a little bit of character because not every cookie is perfect and then once um, I, I added all the hot glued where I wanted it I added some of these uh, pom-poms now the red ones I did not have red pom-poms at least I couldn't find them so I'm just using berries uh, off of a berry branch that I had on hand but I, and here I'm adding the green pom-poms and then again, I just went ahead with some paint and went over the glue. Now the last thing I did to one of them, I just added a little ribbon to the, the top the corner of the head. And this ribbon came from Dollar Tree. I just love Dollar Tree ribbon. I think Dollar Tree ribbon is so much better than the Dollarama's ribbon. I think Dollarama has definitely a lead on the florals that they have over Dollar Tree, but the ribbon definitely goes to Dollar Tree. And you know me, it wouldn't be a DIY uh, set of DIYs if I did not make some sort of a sign. So I had this tray that came from Dollar Tree for a while now, so I decided to finally use it. And I gave it a good coat of white acrylic paint and w wanted this to completely dry. So I can go ahead and write out some words. You can obviously use your Cricut Maker to cut them out, but I this was simple enough that I wanted to just use my red water-based marker to write, um, put the words on it. I thought this was perfect for cookies for Santa because you can actually use it for cookies. Um, all, all you need to do is just seal it with a good sealant uh, so that way you can just wipe it off if you need to. And then I drew on a cookie. Now, this is the only brown acrylic paint I had, which I th thought it was a little bit dark. I did light it up with a little bit of white paint um, mixed in to the brown paint. And then I finished it off by adding some chocolate chips, meaning black, just black acrylic dots. Now to go with the cookies for Santa sign, 
I had this little sign from uh, Michaels. These are so inexpensive, I think around a dollar, and they usually have them close to the checkout. And I gave just the inside uh, some paint. I painted it white in two coats. And once that was done and fully dried, I, um, like I said, I felt that this um, Cookies with Santa sign needed, um, the reindeers needed a sign for themselves as well. So I am just writing out carrots for reindeer here uh, to go along with that Cookies for Santa. Now for this craft, I am using up some of my leftover scraps. I had some of these pieces of garden steaks left over, and I think the other piece is um, a plant holder that I've cut down to pieces. And um, I am cutting the little uh, steaks into uh, square, equal squares, uh, and sanding just the edges down a little bit just to smooth them out. And um, I'm going to be putting some letters on it, so I needed five of them, I think. Yes, five of them. And then for that um, piece of wood, uh, I ended up staining it. But before I stained it, I gave these little squares a coat of white paint. So while the pieces were drying, I and this is when I added the stain, same stain as I was using before, same type of um, way of painting it, just added some stain and spread it out with the rag. I do find that applying stain with a rag is the easiest way and the most even application. I will be adding the little squares to the piece of wood, but I wanted to make sure that they were spaced out evenly um, before I did that. And then I also wanted to write out my words on there as well. And I am using the same uh, water-based marker. So I will be using a hot glue to glue these on. So this is why I'm just making sure that I am spacing them out and there is enough room on each end of this wood so it looks even. I came across this sign on Pinterest and I thought it was super cute and I had some scraps of wood uh, that were perfect for it and so I painted one of them red and the other one white and then I'm also going to be using some of those uh, gingerbread foam gingerbread um, that I had uh, left over. So while the pieces of wood were drying, I took that gingerbread and I wanted it a little bit smaller because the, the one that I had was too big. And then I also wanted to add a dress 
to the gingerbread. So it's a gingerbread woman. Well, I guess it could be a man wearing a dress. And then I am going to uh, use the same hot, uh, well, actually, I'm not using the hot glue for this one. I am using a white marker just to outline everything out where I want it to be. And then I'm going to go and use uh, some of the white paint just to go over because the white marker wasn't really showing the way I wanted it to show. And now for the red piece of uh, wood, I am just outlining my word in a pencil. That way I know it fits and uh, I don't. if I make a mistake, I can just erase it. And once I went ahead with the pencil, I tried my water-based marker in white, but it wasn't really showing up very well. So then I went ahead with my chalkboard marker and just went over the outline. And for the white piece of wood, I used my red water-based marker. And I wrote out the word, and then I also did little dots to outline the wood. I did have to press the marker down a little bit just to release some of the water so the red was showing up more. To finish the sign off, I just had glued the gingerbread person onto it and I think this is such an easy way to use up some of your wood scraps and it'll look great on your tear tray. For the very first project, I am using this wooden uh, sled that I had picked up at Dollar Tree and I want to give it some life by painting it and maybe doing some stenciling. So I'm going to paint it with a apple barrel paint and it's an acrylic paint in black as well as um, fl uh, flag red. And the red is going to go on the top and the black will go on the sides and on the bottom. I love sled decor for um, Christmas. I even picked up a vintage sled last year for my front porch that I absolutely love. And this that was actually the paint for this sled, sled came uh, was inspired by that vintage sled. So I wanted to make it look a little bit when vintage I did find that the red was a little bit bright but I did end up um, adding some black into it so that made it look less uh, less bright uh, I am using a wider brush for the bottom however I did find that into the little crevices I needed to go with a thinner brush and I actually use a lot of makeup brushes for uh, things like this I just find that they work really well um, if you can get your hands on uh, cheaper makeup brushes um, they might be a uh, well worth buy because they do work for a lot of uh, small spaces or if you need thinner lines and especially the eyeliner um, makeup brush does a really good job in thin lines. So as you saw I added some black and then I just wiped it off and blended it and now I'm just adding a little bit more red paint over top of it and blending it all in. I did decide to add one more paint color to this and that was uh, going to be the white acrylic paint. I wanted it to give it a little bit of a snow effect. But before I did that, I did some more blending and I'm just using a coffee filter to blend it all in. I'm not sure where I saw this being done. Uh, you could probably use a paper towel as well, I assume. 
and once everything was blended in there was a little bit of red paint on the sides a little bit of black paint on top and that is exactly what the look that I was going for I thought that this gave it that uh, vintage look so uh, I also wasn't quite sure uh, what I wanted to put on here and then I ended up deciding just to go ahead with the snowflake so before I actually dry brush the white paint on I did sponge the snowflakes on it and I am just using a dollar store bristle brush and a apple barrel uh, white paint acrylic paint and like I always say when you're stenciling anything on less paint is better you can always build up on it um, but if you go too heavy you might get leakage and I wanted to give it some effect like uh, the snowflakes uh, were kind of not fully on in certain areas I hope that makes sense da, 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 da. making our Christmas memories I've been working so much lately I can barely find the time to sleep Yeah, I spend my time running around Keeping people pleased But this is my favorite holiday It's a chance to start once the snowflakes were on there, I felt like it still needed a little bit more, so I decided to add these little stars to to it as well. Cause I missed you so I'm letting go of everything but you. These are the good times with you. Baby, this year is such And then whatever paint was left on that brush, um, I just uh, dried it off a little bit on the rag and then just dry brushed it, the rest of it onto the sled. Isn't this how it's supposed to be? Making our Christmas memories, oh, and I've been long to hold you close. Forget about everything else. Isn't this how it's And to finish the sled off, I just gave it a light uh, sanding, and this I think was what gave it that vent even more of that vintage look. Making our Christmas memories. I just love the way this turned out and I think this one will go on my rustic front tree. It totally turned out different than what I started off thinking it should turn out to but I picked up this at uh, Dollar Tree they have all sorts of shapes I already shared my Christmas tree shape and what I did with it and now I'm just using the ornament shape and I will be making it into an ornament. So I give it a solid coat of that same black acrylic paint I've used earlier. And then once I have the, the, the fully painted, I am just painting the one side. I take a rag and just wipe uh, some of it off. And this does make some of that wood grain show through, which I just love. And you want to get into all the little crevices and uh, wipe it all the way around. Now once that was done, I took, uh, I was going to use those wooden shapes but changed my mind. I am going to go ahead with uh, the stencil again and just figuring out what I wanted on there and I'm going to stencil it on with some white acrylic paint. I wanted this to kind of go along with a sign that I made in my last DIY that I shared on Tuesday. And I think I forgot to mention that these stencils did come from Dollar Tree. I picked them up last year or the year before. I have not seen them yet this year, but it doesn't mean that they're not going to be out. And maybe they'll, uh, you know, have even better ones than these ones. I have used these quite a bit in the past year. And for the sponging for this, I'm just using a small piece of sponge. And again, less is 
more and then I'm just adding some stars to it again and to complete it I'm taking that extra rope from the Christmas trees that I made just earlier tying it up and I'm going to hot glue it to the back so that way I can hang it up on a Christmas tree so these all of these DIYs were so easy to make they all came under dollar fifty and um, they okay so the all the tinsel needs to come off all the trees so I will be doing this for every single one of them but this very first one I was cutting down in half because I wanted the tree to be a bit shorter uh, however I will be saving this other part that I'm cutting off for the last pro DIY project and then you want to use assortment of ribbons I used um, this cork um, fall cork ribbon uh, instead of burlap I was going to cut my white burlap ribbon into strips but then decided to use the cork one instead and then you cut them to about inch to two inches depending on the size of your tree and then you fold them in half and hot glue them at the cut parts so you have a solid solid fold and then you hot glue those uh, onto the tree I did overlap them a little bit on the sides um, I just thought that would look nicer and then um, and there is no rhyme and reason for the pattern that I went with like the order of the ribbons I just went with what I thought would look good you could use solid ribbon for that like solid color ribbon or any kind of ribbon you really have on hand that's kind of Christmassy if you're going with a Christmas theme I think you could even make this as a Halloween tree if you had like or a fall tree if you had the fall ribbon um, this this can be done for really any season and then once I was finished following um, the pattern on the on the bottom and had gluing the whole tree I went ahead and did this for the top of for the whole tree but the next row when you start you want it to hang the hang to overlap the bottom row a little bit so you don't see um, where the bottom row ends kind of thing I hope that makes sense but I think you can see what I'm doing here on the video I've been working so much lately I can barely find the time to sleep Yeah, I spend my time running around Keeping people pleased But this is my favorite holiday It's a chance to start over new Cause I missed you so I'm letting go of everything but you so you can really see the overlap it kind of fans out a little bit and that is what I the look that I was going for and at the top here this was a little bit hard and this whole project was a little bit tough on my fingers um, I, I don't know what I did with the little um, uh, rubber ends f for my fingers so I don't get burned um, but I did get burned a couple times here but when you get to the the top you want to pinch it together at the top um, now this doesn't look um, the nicest when you reach the top so I took a little piece of um, a rope that I had just left over from one of the other projects and wrapped it around the top um, I really like the way this looked you could also add um, like a star at the top or anything really at the top that would kind of cover up that little pinch at the top these are the good times with you baby this year is just gonna be you and me hang by the fire and chill isn't this how it's supposed to be making our christmas memories oh and i've been I just think this tree turned out so cute and I can't wait to use it in my decor. This is one of these um, little trucks that came in a package from Dollar Tree and I just painted it, it was just the brown color and then I had this plaque that I had um, dry brushed some white on it and then I'm using the rag just to kind of 
rub off some of the paint that I applied to the truck. I just didn't want to bore you with the painting because I did exactly the same colors as I did on the other one. And I'm going to hot glue this to the plaque. And then from Dollar uh, Store and more, I picked up this Ho 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 sign. Um, and uh, I'm just going to leave that as is. I will remove that sticker in the back. And then I'm going to hot glue it to the plaque. I did find that the truck was a little bit too high. So I ended up popping it off and re-gluing it just a touch lower. And I just love how simple this sign was to make and how how it looks i rustic it looks i love it for this last project i have this what would you say a house form house frame uh, it was a set of three and i think i can't remember whether they came from dollar tree or dollar m i've used them several of them uh in the past few months and I'm just going to take the backing off because I'm not going to be hanging it up and then I'm going to take my um, um, wrapping paper in the buffalo check red and black color and I'm going to glue it to the back of it with the front of the uh, wrapping paper facing the inside of the house and so the way I do this I just glue a piece on using school glue you can use a hot glue or you can use any glue and then I put it on a cutting mat and just take my a knife and just cut it around and this was I felt the easiest way to do it to get it um, close and make sure that it fits perfectly on and then in my craft stash I think still back from the primary school days when my kids um, were in primary school they had a project to, to to create a city and we picked up these trees at um, Michael's so I've had it for a very very long time and then so I ended up hot gluing them onto the back and kind of staggering them in size and I thought this looked uh, very nice you could also flock these trees as well to give them a little bit of a snowy effect but I, I like them just the way they were and then I'm going to hot glue these uh, ornaments a little red truck is it an ornament? These little things that came from uh, Dollar Tree. Just right there. And I thought this was so simple and easy to make. And it turned out absolutely beautiful. I love it. Can't wait to use it in my decor. For next a Trash to Treasure, this one is not actual trash. This is a thrift flip I picked uh, two of these up I already used one um, at a thrift store a while back they are just um, mini cutting boards but they I think they were more meant for like a cheese board uh, but they had a really yucky shiny coating on it that I did not like so I painted mine white um, but a really light coat of white I did not I wasn't looking for a full coverage because I'm going to be mod podging a gingerbread recipe and I actually have this as a free printable um, I will leave the link down below it is over on my blog that you can download if you would like to use it yourself so I'm a little bit bummed about this project because once I was done mod podging the little recipe onto the board, I did end up painting some of that white that was left over uh, with a little bit of brown, kind of blending the white and brown in and then adding brown to the edges of the recipe as well just to make it look a little bit rustic and to um, kind of cover up the transition between the wood and the paper uh, but I cannot find the footage because my regular camera died so I was using my different camera and I have no idea what happened to that footage so you will not see me painting it brown or adding the second layer of Mod Podge on it which I did 
But nevertheless, here is the finished product, and I absolutely love the way it turned out. I think it's going to look cute as a sign on a tear tray. Enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me down a comment. I would appreciate it so much. I love um, reading all the comments, responding to them, chatting with you guys. And uh, if you are stopping by for the very first time, I would really love it if you considered subscribing and becoming part of my DIY YouTube community. So until next time, hope you guys have a wonderful day. And thank you all so much for watching. Bye.